Today I will show you how to schedule and distribute Blitz reports. So to schedule Blitz reports, we would first run the report from the Blitz reports form. So we open a Blitz report form. Let's say this example here, GL balance, and then we run it once. So now you see the status here, pending, running. And then once it's completed, it would show the output file. So every Blitz report runs as a background concurrent request. And to schedule it, we would now that we have it uh, run once, we would go to view request. And from here, we would rerun the request. So here we have our concurrent request. We could either copy it or we could rerun it. And the reason why we rerun it from here after submitting it from our Blitz report form is that we have then the parameters in the right positions. So all the Blitz reports, they run under the concurrent program name called Blitz report. And the first parameter is the report name and second parameter, the template and so on. And the actual report parameters, they are down here. But on the Oracle screen, they're just called parameter one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So you would not know that in this case, the fifth parameter is the ledger name or the eighth parameter is the period name and so on. For that reason, you would first run it from the Blitz report form and then you would copy it. And uh, yeah, then we can schedule it as required on a periodic basis. And we could also, for example, increment the date parameters. So also that works. If you have a date parameter in Blitz report, it would automatically increment if you set this checkbox. But now the reason that you would schedule the Blitz report is usually that you would like to have the output sent automatically somewhere. So we could, in this case, we could specify here the delivery option. So we could specify an email and we could send it by FTP to a specific server, or we could use this clouds web DAV sending message. But the most popular one is email. And for that, we have to make it easier for the users to we have placed the email onto our options screen. So the options screen, you can access directly from the Blitz report form here. When you click on this gray area, it op opens a small window like this. And on here, you can select an email. So you could either use the editor to enter an email, and you can also use a semicolon or comma separated or a line feed separated distribution list of more than one email, or you can select an email from the list of values. So let's just select my own email. And then we can send it like this. Let me just send it. And we will find now if you look at the request again, let's go to view request, that once we populated the email on the Blitz report screen, here in the details, we find that the delivery option for the email is populated. So that's how Blitz Report sends the emails. It just automatically fills out the delivery options here from Oracle. And then the Oracle standard post-process uh, manager sends the email. And we also have, you see here, the subject. We also have a subject. This is the default subject. And it uses placeholders. So dynamically, for example, in the email subject, it shows the number of rows that were returned. And you can also create your own email subject and modify it as required. So let me show you the email example. So this was an example. So you see here, this is the result. So this is the subject. It shows the report name, the number of records retrieved, and so on. And the output file is the same as you would have on the server here. So that's how the email sending message works. So in addition to the email, let me go back to the Blitz report form. We have more options on the screen. So let's remove the email. We have, for example, here the output format. We have the possibility to change the, the format from Excel to a text separated format, either CSV or TSV, or you can also specify a custom delimiter. So these text output formats, they are typically required if you would like to use Blitz report as an outbound interface. And the destination system requires a text format instead of Excel. So then you could use this. Or you could also use a custom post process. And the custom post process that is uh, allows very a lot of flexibility because you could create, or your technical team could create a shell script that does certain post processing actions. We have a customer, for example, who converts the output files after completion automatically to a PDF and then places them onto a different web server outside of EBS so that users who access that web server can download the PDFs from there automatically without having 
the, the access to eBay. So, so those sort of things can be done. And we have here an example that converts the, the output files from Excel to PDF. So those sort of things can be done here as well. And in addition to this, oh, now it's opening the PDF example. In addition to this, further down here, you have more options. And the last three options here, they are not visible for users. They are only visible for people with developer access. Because with these three options, you could place a copy of the output file into an additional server directory, either on the database node here, you can select the server directory or on the application server. So let me show you how that works. So let's assume we would like to have an additional output file automatically placed in the folder TMP. And then we can also have the folder name dynamic depending on the parameters that we used. And that is very nice because we could, for example, automatically, depending on which parameters we used in report, we could create a directory. Let's say we would like to have a separate directory having the ledger name in the directory path and also let's say the financial period here. And when we run it like this, let's first run it for January and then let's also run it for second time for February 08 as well. So now I ran it twice. So now we would expect that on the server, we would have a folder created called slash TMP and then the ledger name and then the period name. So let me show you that. So here, this is the, the access tool for to access the application server. Here we have our TMP folder. And in here, we now have our folder created called vision operations. That is ledger name. And here we have our financial periods. And that is very nice because you could, this way you could schedule for example, at month's end, you could schedule a list of concurrent requests or a list of Blitz reports, and then automatically place all the required files into a specific folder, for example, having the financial period name as a folder name. And you can also use the Blitz reports in a request set, for example, so that you can run them all at the same time in just one single request set. So all these things can be done. Okay, that was a quick introduction to the scheduling with Blitz report. Thanks for watching.